Welcome to an in vitro investigation of irrigation efficacy. Part two, instruments, irrigants, and activation. This in vitro investigation was done in 3D printed block halves. They were CAD modeled with an access cavity, canal on either side of that access cavity, and an isthmus space between them. The isthmus space being 0.1 to 0.15 millimeters thick. The block was sectioned in half in CAD space, and each of the two separate halves were printed, both being identical. Now here comes the fun part. I chose to use prosciutto as a pulp replica, and not just any prosciutto, but this is Casa Ferradini, all natural, minimum processing, no artificial ingredients, and it's also gluten-free. The block halves are then glued together with light cure adhesive, and we're ready to go. First thing I want to show you in this block is how useless hand instruments are for debriding canals. Basically, they just mush it up in there, but don't really take much of anything out. Look at what's left after hand instrumentation. Here's positive pressure irrigation that won't be able to affect the apical zone until more preparation is accomplished. Again, hand instruments debriding the primary canal. Using larger files, that was a 10. This is a rotary file used by hand. Still, all the debris pretty much left there. Watch what happens when we spin this thing at 300 RPM. It is actively augering material out of the canal, pulp tissue out of the canal. That's very interesting because most of us think that rotary files are not the best instrument to take to length as the first instrument. This was a very challenging case due to the severe curvature of the distal lingual canal in this lower first molar, rare. We see a 1306 traverse rotary negotiating file cutting to length. This was done as a live demonstration, broadcast to the internet. The file is cleaned and checked. I'm powering it with Merida's Triad Auto ZX2 cordless handpiece with the apex locator inside of it. Notice how the file just stops. Once it goes in there, it turns on and starts itself again. And when it hits length, bang, it just stops. As you can see, we're to the full length of the file there. There's a 25 millimeter canal. This canal and the two mesial canals had severe curvatures. All three of these small molar canals were instrumented with just the th single 1306 traverse rotary negotiating file by Kerr Endodonics. Now back to the previous block. Again, positive pressure irrigation, maxi probe needle. Side vent, closed end. Rotary dry rent in the lower canal. Suddenly, we have room for the positive pressure irrigation needles so it can get in there and get the job done. Let's take a look at what happens during soaking with hypochlorite in another model, another replica. Positive pressure irrigation. It's a little tough to find that canal orifice. It wasn't that smooth. This is what we all do at the start of the irrigation uh, procedure. Uh, often activated as well. Once we get the particulate matter out of the primary canal, then the hypochlorite has a better chance of doing its job. Actually, the best time to soak with hypochlorite is after the shaping is done because, take a look at this. Once you have a canal that has some shape to it, even subtle, slight shape, there's enough hypochlorite in there to seriously degrade the pulp tissue. One thing that helps hypochlorite activity is caffeine. Not to mix with the hypochlorite. You put the hypochlorite in there, go have a cappuccino, come back, the job is done. I love watching. It's kind of relaxing. Um, in Sweden, they have these TV channels of people knitting and uh, showing like uh, outdoor scenes that you think are a photo until a bird flies across. Well, um, I'd enter this the competition for uh, relaxation for endodontists. Cracks me up. But look at that. Hypochlorite is amazing. To this day, there's nothing that removes a biofilm better than that. Read Dr. Kosterton, the guy that figured biofilms out. Look at, look at the little inroads it's making on this 
pulp tissue, this really tough, difficult test of pulp tissue dissolution. Now let's watch activation of the irrigating solutions. This eddy tip is on a sonic handpiece. We're seeing close up, slow motion, and this thing is really seriously stirring the solutions to a much greater effect all the way to the tip, unlike endo activator. Sonic energy is very effective in a root canal shown by gentle wave. This is not multisonic, but uh, it's a very aggressive activity. It really stirs things much better than ultrasonics. Ultrasonics will have one or two nodes of resonance along its length, and that's the only place it's really stirring the solutions. With sonics, we see the entire length of this eddy tip affecting the solutions. Rotary files are brought in again, making a better pathway for the positive pressure irrigation needle. Here we are in the adjacent canal. Again, sonication with an eddy tip. I just love watching this close up. Got a really nice sharp focus here. Positive pressure irrigation is quite effective at flushing the debris out of the primary canals. It's not doing anything to the lateral recesses. We're now depending on the hypochlorite to do what it does best, chemically dissolve, digest. Let's watch it again in another model, the connective tissue in this prosciutto. Positive pressure irrigation is cleaning out the primary canal. They've been instrumented in this case to a 3006 with a maximum fluid diameter limitation of one millimeter using the GTX files by Densply. Now we're in soak time mode and things are happening. It's a little out of focus here, but there is tissue being hydrolyzed as we watch. Notice there is uh, an air bubble which is actually moving coronally and displacing solution around it. So apparently not all vapor locks are equal. Now the solution is being activated with the sonic eddy tip. We see activation along its whole length. This is a plastic tip, extremely safe, cannot, can't hurt a canal. And it definitely is pushing debris around in there, breaking stuff loose, not affecting the digestion of the connective tissue like I had expected, actually. Um, it's, it's really appears to be the time that makes the most difference, although when the eddy tip is in there activating and we follow with positive pressure irrigation, um, it's, uh, it, it's an effective back and forth. If you're going to do passive irrigation, this is one way to do it. Most of us, I think, do the activation at the start and then depend on soaking for the 30 to 40 minutes that we know it takes in a root canal. The eddy tip is stirring the solutions, activating them. And we're coming up about to a two minute mark. Let's compare. Passive irrigation on the top and activated irrigation on the bottom. I just don't see that big of a difference in this small time frame. So let's look at a different method of irrigation. Activation, negative pressure irrigation. And this is a constant flow study. We have negative pressure irrigation needles to the end of the root canal. They were cut to a 3006 like before, provided hypochlorite as much as it can suction up those little needles is placed in the pulp chamber. So let's watch in speed it up mode. At 8x, we can see it's a little jumpy. Uh, the fluids are being exchanged. They're being suctioned down to the end of the canal, going in those little micro ports. I'm sorry, this footage isn't very f well focused. But what are we seeing here? We're seeing a fairly slow process. The Achilles heel of negative pressure irrigation has always been clogging of the micro pores at the end of the needle. So I had to blow air through the little micro cannulas to 
blow out any obstruction that must have collected in there, improve the backlighting, and so now we're going to watch it at 20x to prevent severe boredom. Keep your eye on the tissue in the isthmus area as it's melting away. This is really amazing. That's at about five minutes. And the isthmus is clean in 13 minutes. <laughs> that's, that's pretty amazing. Look at that. It's just disappearing. It's being dissolved simply because there's fresh solution, slow flow, but fresh solution during this whole period of time. Now look at the negative pressure irrigation actually removing pulp tissue beyond the end of the needles. There are people who think that NPI requires a large apical shape be cut and you know all the trends today are the opposite to have uh, keep it terminus its original diameter don't enlarge it and they misunderstand this technique of irrigation and think that you have to get the needle to the end we're seeing an effect beyond the end by at least two two and a half three almost three millimeters below obviously the close the little vent holes are the quicker it happens and these are the latter reaches this is probably not a fair test just like the gentle wave uh, study wasn't a fair test and again I'm not claiming prosciutto is pulp tissue this is just a relativity test for dissolution speed and capabilities of different methods of solution uh, activation and placement all right we're just about finished I want to take that last little bit right at the end there and it's done it took 40 minutes so you know, Marcus Hapasalo was right about how long it takes to kill and clean everything out of a complex root canal system. But nevertheless, this is remarkably clean. So you can clean a root canal out without spending $80,000. You're going to have to spend more time with your patients in the chair. So very interesting thing to look at. I think we all need to understand more about irrigation in general. And again, this is a test uh, made to be as heinous as I could think of it. It's so way easier to kill bugs with hypochlorite than it is to digest pulp tissue out of little tiny lateral areas. What did I learn from the study? Quite a few things. Um, I confirmed that sodium hypochlorite is very effective with adequate time. Um, I saw that standard 6% bleach will kill everything in there in 40 minutes regardless of what, how you do it. And that time is the number one factor in successful irrigation. I found that sonic activation may not speed tissue dissolution. I was surprised to see less of an effect from strong sonic activation than I expected. Great for stirring things up, obviously, and then irrigating them out. Um, we do need to rattle things around in there a little bit, but it's not going to shorten the time to digest all the pulp. The final thing that I found was that and I've read this, but I never really understood it. I never twigged to it um, on a deep level, was that constant flow of sodium hypochlorite can speed its efficacy. And we saw that with the constant negative pressure irrigation, uh, you know, constantly delivering, a, uh, uh, delivering hypochlorite to the pulp chamber as the irrigation process goes on. That's, that's, that's a lot of personal attention, however, but um, it was super effective. Uh, in just 15 minutes, we got remarkable results. So I'll be looking at that some more. That's intriguing to me. What's next? The obvious answer is to trap human pulp tissue in the isthmus space. All my local endo buddies are saving broached pulps for me. I got a call today, in fact. Anyway, this is Steve Buchanan signing off. I'll see you at the Apex.